So, what's going on guys, KDC here, welcome back to a brand new video. And today we are checking out the top 7 best ZVC builds in Albion Online. Of course, I will be showing you a variety of different builds, so no matter what, if you are a healer, DPS or a tank, you will find what you are looking for. For better efficiency, check the timestamps for each build, but I recommend for you to watch this video till the end as we will look into each build's strengths and weaknesses, why I chose it, how to use it and so much more. So with all of this said, let's get right into it. Then moving over to my first build choice which is the Permafrost Prism Staff. So to be honest, I've been playing Albion for a few years now and my most favorite weapon from all of them are the Frost Staffs. And now let's take a look at what we are using for the build. So first things first, obviously we have the Permafrost Staff with the third Q, then the second W and then the third Passive. Then for the helmet I went with the Knight's Helmet and I chose the third ability and third passive. Then for the chest piece I went with the Scholar's Robe and I picked the third ability and first passive. And then last but not the least, for boots I went with the Cleric Sandals and picked the third ability and second passive. As for the cape I'm running with the Morgana Cape which is 100% needed for this build to work the best. And for food I went with the tier 7 omelet and tier 7 resistance potions. Ok so now let's go over the build's playstyle. So as any mage DPS your main power is on how many Q abilities you can spam the enemy with. As frost staffs this is specifically their main strength so this is why we build this build around it. So first of all in ZVZ fights usually you want to do your damage on many players at once. And what you want to do for your abilities, first of all press your R ability and then right after on a big player clump press your E ability and then spam or press Q as much as as you can. So let's take a look at what using these spells in this specific order did to our build. So by using R plus E you will as well activate your cape which will give you very fast attack speed. And that is basically the main build's goal. You try to activate as many attack speed spells as you can to give your boost so you could spam Q abilities on enemies. And when either way your shot color calls or you see a big player group just standing all at once super close to each other, you use your weapons ability aka E and the spell will stun everyone for a second and do massive amounts of damage. So yeah, like you can see, this build is super simple and straightforward. But in meanwhile, while we have our cooldowns after using the spell combos, we have 4 abilities. First of all, 2 teleportation spells, which are W and F, so if you need to get in a fight quickly, use them. And only use the ability and potions when the ZVZ shot color has set to use your defensives. Or if you are in a more open world roaming ZVZ fight, like the faction warfare, then just use these two spells as defensives when you feel like a big damage is about to hit you. So yeah, like I have said this build is super OP and straightforward and has very fun playstyle with you being able to do a lot of damage and teleport all around the map. Then taking a closer look at the second build which is the tank soulside ZVZ build. So no matter in what type of ZVZ group you are in, anyone definitely needs one or two soulside players and later you'll be able to see why. But then for the build itself, the weapon of choice of course is the one and only soul sight. And for the abilities, I went with the second Q, 5th W and 4th aka the last passive. Then for the helmet of choice, I picked the knight's helmet and the third ability and third passive. Then for the chest piece, I went with the knight's armor and the third ability and both first passives. Last but not the least, for boots, I went with the hunter's shoes and picked the third ability and fourth passive. Then for my cape, I picked the Fort Sterling cape and for food I ordered from Starbucks the tier 8 beef sandwich and tier 7 resistance potions. Ok so now let's see what is going on for this build's playstyle. So basically as a tank your main objective is to attack enemies frontline and specifically for this build use and hit your E ability. And like you can tell this build is worth everything because only of the E ability. So always save it and use it only when needed. But probably if you chose the tank's role you are more familiar with the game than DPS and healer players. But anyways, let's take a look at the basics. So when you want to hit multiple player groups, you first of all use your F ability, which will give you super fast speed. And you use it so the enemy doesn't have time to react and you can reach them super quickly. Then after using the boots and getting closer to your target, use the E ability and that's it. Then wait again for another engage call from your shot caller. And in meanwhile you have cooldowns, so try to harass and annoy the enemy's DPS and healers by using the other spells which are Q and W. And then for your own defense, use the resistant potions and the ability. 
aka the helmet which will increase your crowd control resistance. But last and not the least, the knight's armor choice could be seen as controversial pick after the nerf, but I still find it useful and very good especially to protect your group and hold bridges and choke points. So, for your R ability you have a castable spell which deploys a wind wall for 6 seconds, but you have to channel the spell to activate it. So if you're a new player, go with the default tank's armor which is the guardian armor, but if you're more experienced and want to protect your teammates and do 500 IQ plays, then for sure try this knight's armor and you won't regret it. Then as for the third build, we have the legendary Siege Bow ZVZ build. As by now, you should have a little bit more information on what is going on in ZVZ, so we'll go straight forward to the build. And the weapon itself is of course the Siege Bow, with the second Q, third W ability and fourth passive. Then as for my helmet, again I picked the Knight's helmet and went with the third ability and third passive. But don't worry, as all the other builds coming up next will have different helmets to give you more variety, so just stay tuned for them, but besides the point, some armors are just too OP and this is one of them for sure. Ok, but then for armor I went with the cleric robe and picked the third ability and first passive. Lastly, for shoes I went with the soldier boots and chose the third ability and fourth passive. Then for my cape I went with the Tetford cape and for food I chose the tier 7 omelette and tier 7 resistance potions. And as for the Siege Bow build's playstyle, it is super straightforward, like all of my builds are, and I try not to overcomplicate anything. So, what you do is just simply use your Q and W on the enemies, and the Q shots an arrow which deals damage to all players in 3 meter radius. And then the W sets up a small trap, which if enemies step in, explodes and deals damage again to all players in 3 meter range. And then the weapon's E ability is basically like a huge casted animation which shoots arrows to all players standing in the way of this beast of a weapon. I have seen bunch of even small groups just stunning enemy players and one guy with his siege bow just activates his E ability and destroys everyone standing in his way. And then like in any other build we have the R and the ability for defensive spells and resistance potions. I already explained them in the build 1 and 2, so by now you should know how to use them. But lastly, we have the soldier boots, which I went with them on this build, because as a ranged DPS, a lot of times you are always in a way of spells, and very close to the enemies and people moving back and forwards a lot of times you will have to move fast and long distances. So not to get left behind or maybe run away or whatever, use the F ability and in few seconds your speed boosts will stack up and you can run to whatever place you want. Then with that said, now we have come to the 4th build which are the Galatine Pair DPS build. So of course I picked the Galatine Pair weapon with the 2nd Q, 4th W and 3rd passive. Then for my helmet of choice I went with the Royal Hood and chose the 3rd ability and 3rd passive. Then for my armor I went with the Assassin's Jacket and picked the 3rd ability and 3rd passive. Last but not the least, for my boots I chose the Mage Sandals and went with the 3rd ability and 2nd passive. Then for my cape I went with the Tetford cape and for food I chose the tier 8 beef stew and tier 7 resistance potions. And then for the galatine pair playstyle. First of all you are a massive damage dealer and meant to bait out your enemies and hit them all at once. So your game plan is to use first of all the D ability and then use the R ability aka become invisible and in that 3 to 4 second window while your damage percentage is charging up and you are invisible, go to your enemies and in the last 5th second use the E ability on groups of enemies and eliminate all of them in just one spell combo. Then as you are obviously in the enemy's territory and have killed bunch of them, to get out of this sticky situation, teleport out using the F ability and it has 1 second delay, so you can bait out players to use all spells on you and you running in a different direction, while getting teleported in the next second. And then in meanwhile, to get all the cooldowns back you use your Q and W abilities and for defensives use the resistance potions. This build is a bit more high tier and requires a bit of practice, but besides that it is super OP and is basically the best one shot build in ZVZs. Then for one of the last builds on the list we have the Grow Keeper tank build. So of course I went with the Grow Keeper weapon and for abilities I chose the 3rd Q, 2nd W and 4th passive. Then for my helmet of choice I went with the Cleric Cal, which later I will explain why and for the abilities I picked the 3rd spell and 1st passive. Then for my chest piece I chose the Guardian's armor and for its abilities I went with the 3rd spell and both 1st passives. And then last but not the least, for boots I chose the hunter shoes with the 3rd ability and 4th passive. As for my cape of choice, I went with the 4th sterling cape 
And for my food, I ordered from In N Out Tier 8 Beef Stew and Tier 7 Resistance Potions. And as we already looked into the role of tank in ZVCs in the previous builds, we will just briefly go over this weapon's playstyle. So your goal as a tank is to engage and be the protector aka the frontline of your ZVC group. And like per all the other builds, all of your main strength lies within the E ability. Which basically is just a massive leap. When you leap towards your enemies, you stun all of them at once in a massive 5.5 meter radius. And at the same time, you increase your damage resistance. So the right way to play it is after you have chosen the target to hit, use your F ability aka the boots to get a speed boost and sprint into your enemies and hit them with the E ability, which afterwards your DPS players should deal all the damage. But then as your role is a tank, you don't want to run away, but stay in the same area in your enemy's frontline and use all the other defensive spells. Use your Qs and Ws to move around the enemies easier and use the R ability when you are close to enemy's DPS, which creates then an aura which all DPS within will do a lot less damage. And last but not the least, use your Cleric Cowl whenever the enemy is trying to do the same thing to you, and after using it, you will become frozen for 5 seconds, and any damage dealt to you will be zero. Of course, you can always use the knight's helmet, but for more variety, I chose the cleric cow. And now, we have finally come to the support role, aka the best healer ZVZ build. So for the weapon of choice, I went with the wild staff, and picked the third Q, second W, and first passive. Then for my helmet, you pick the mercenary hood and third ability and first passive. Then for the armor, you pick the cleric robe and third ability and first passive as well. And then lastly, for boots you go with the cleric sandals and choose the third ability and second passive. Then for the cape you go with the limhurst cape and for food you pick the tier 7 omelette and tier 7 resistance potions. So, as a healer you can run out of energy and it is super important to have at least a cape which restores the energy. But if you think that you don't need extra resistance potions and want even more mana then go with the extra energy potions. But in my experience as a nature healer you should be fine either way. And then taking a closer look at this build's playstyle which is super simple. Your main objective is to support your other teammates. So you always stay in the backline of your group which means that all spells you have to cast not on your teammates directly but in front of them. Because not only you want to heal your DPS players but tanks as well. So in whatever direction your group is moving, place all the healing spells in front of them so all players can step in and receive healing. But basically your Q ability is a mushroom spell which you can place on the ground and your teammates by stepping on them will receive healing. Then moving over to your W which is a cleansing spell which when you get stunned or your teammates you can cleanse them and remove the stun or the negative effects. And lastly your weapon is Z which is a massive spell which you can place on the ground and any player in that green circle will receive massive amounts of healing. And then like we discussed in the previous builds, use your R and F ability to protect yourself or to run away. And when you get stunned, because of being on the move as a healer is very important, you activate your D ability which is another cleanse, like the W. But just this one you can only cast on yourself, and the other players in a very close range will get it as well. So yeah, in a quick summary, always stay in your teammates backline, place all of your healing spells in front of your teammates and don't forget to use your defensives as especially healers are super squishy and can get deleted in just one second so be careful and good luck and then for the next and last build here for you i have the miss piercer bow build this build is super strong and with the other armor pieces i have chosen will multiply your damage by a lot so let's take a look at it first of all the weapon of choice is the miss piercer with the second q first W and third passive. Then for my helmet I went with the royal hood and third ability and third passive. The next up is the armor aka the cleric robe and like in the other build I went with the same third ability and first passive. And lastly for my boots I went with the royal sandals and chose the third ability and second passive. Then for my cape I'm using the Thetford cape and for food I went with the tier 8 stew and tier 7 resistance potions. And now let's take a look at this build's playstyle. So to be honest, I like this one the most, except the frost staffs, because you're able to deal so much damage from very far away, and the spells itself look very cool. So first of all, you want to use your F ability, and then right after the D ability. And what this does basically in the next 4 to 5 seconds, your damage percentage will multiply by a lot. So you just pick your target, then use your W spell, which will give you explosive shots, and then you just simply activate your E ability which will give you 4 shots of arrows. 
So just simply every second or two pick the direction you want to shoot and press E. And as this build is primarily meant to hit and run, for our only defensives we have the R ability and resistance potions. The build is meant to be a glass cannon, meaning to appear only to deal a lot of damage and peace out when the enemies are attacking. Ok so with all of this said, before we finish up the video I want to clear up few things. First of all, these builds I consider to be the best of the best. But you don't have to use 8.3 gear, you can simply use tier 6, tier 7 or whatever tier you can afford. Then second of all, there are of course very good other builds which I didn't mention in this video, like the Morningstar tank build, fire staffs and other ones. So for this video not to be an hour long, I chose only the top 7 builds. But if you want to see all the other ones, then let me know in the comment section down below and I will make a part 2 of this video. And besides that, if you're interested in how I make very fast silver, or what are the best builds for solo player PvP and PvP activities, then check all these other Albion guides by browsing through my channel. With that said, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and enable that notification bell, so you won't miss any other guides, PvP videos or anything else. For any further questions or comments about the video, leave a comment down below. And with that said, I will see you in the next one. So take it easy, peace. Yo, I ain't here for the money, I ain't here for the fame Though it might be nice to own a jet plane I'ma do it all for you, come along